Hey lovelies, welcome, welcome back. Today's project is going to be a pair of Regency inspired short stays. Whilst I'm making those stays, we're gonna go on a little Bridgerton binge, because why not? I'm going to construct this whole thing only using this needle and thread. And I'm also going to show you is how I drafted the pattern myself, so you can do the same with your own measurements. <laughs> Start off with drawing a vertical line with the desired length of the stays. Next up, you draw a horizontal line with your bust measurement divided by 4 and make that a rectangle. Then measure out your cup height and draw another vertical line, the underbust line. From that underbust line, mark out your underarm to underbust measurement. Then mark out 4 cm and construct a slight curve for the underarm, like so. Take the nip to nip measurement divided by 2 and mark it on the underbust line. From there, you mark 1.5 cm in both directions and draw two vertical lines. This is where the cup inserts will go. And the last step is to mark the position for the boning and the lacing. To make things easier for the back piece, I simply traced the front and added the boning position. As for the shoulder strap, I simply took the measured length of the strap and subtracted that one by a few centimeters. And the last step is then to round out those curves. For the cup inserts, first we draw a vertical line with the cup height. Then there's a tiny bit of math. So, first we subtract the underbust measurement from the bust measurement. If your bust measurement was 90 and your underbust was 80, you would have the difference which is 10. And divided by 4, that would be 2.5, and that's the width of your insert. Make that a triangle, round it out, and you have a pattern for the stays. Congratulations! I finished my stays off with bias tape, which you can make yourself, or, you know, buy it in a store. Your choice. Finally, I could fire up Bridgerton. Woo! So I was happily basting along and then this came out of nowhere. I sing, I dance, I can divide and multiply, I even construct my own house. I thought, wow, they could have ended the season right then and there. If Anthony were as rational as he claims to be. Because who doesn't want a crafty girlfriend, am I right? Anyways, back to basting. Your character is as deficient as your horsemanship. I shall bid you good night. If that's not a sick insult, I don't know what is. time to actually insert the gussets which was a bit scary but I just thought of Lady Violet in this scene. My dear is happiness. And how she perfectly inserted herself into the conversation <laughs> and um, I thought you know what I can do it. of the Featheringtons are really those small kind of ticking offs that poor Penelope gets from her mom like this one for goodness sake Penelope stop your pacing before you give me indigestion apologies mama classic Do 
don't tell me what to do. Me. Okay. That's actually not a bee, it's a bumblebee, I think. And these don't really go around stinging people to death, but <laughs> just saying. And then it was time to do the side scene, which doesn't look like a big deal, but it kind of was to me, so... Look at me, everyone! I'm so sorry. Daphne. That's bad timing if there ever was one. And right when you think, okay, this couldn't get any worse, it did. Miss Edwina. My lord? Miss Edwina Sharma. Will you marry me? Be your Viscountess, I shall marry you. What was he thinking? Ah, oh, and then she said yes. Rather welcome in refreshment. Is it not Woo! <laughs> Refreshing indeed. Okay, so I enjoy a wet man out of the water scene as anybody does, but does he really need to undress himself completely to get out of the pond? I mean, but you know, whatever. I'm not complaining here. <laughs> They were brilliant! <laughs> he really saved the day, in my opinion, because otherwise, who knows what the queen would have said or done or whatever. She will make a most excellent queen, Your Majesty. I really like the look on the on the king's face when, when she stops speaking. Like, who are you, young lady? Have I seen you before? Yeah, I'm telling you, with this sewing along the edges and attaching the bias tape it took forever. It just took forever. And so did this episode, in, in my opinion. It was so long and so nerve-wracking and I really just wanted it to end. They're literally outside in the garden. What about all the scandal stuff? I mean, yeah, okay, nobody of the ton is there, but they're still right outside the garden. Isn't that a bit risky? Yes, finally, finally we get to see some underwear. <laughs> I'm so happy. This is what I'm making. Why do they have... Uh, no. Some... Uh, 
another conflict really <laughs> Why does she keep refusing him? I don't understand. Oh. Please go. Kate. I know I am imperfect, but I will humble myself before you because I cannot imagine my life without you. And that is why I wish to marry you. And all he had to do was just make a speech. That took him a long time to figure out. So while Kent and he got their happy ending, I still had actually a lot of stuff to do uh, to be finished. So to get my own happy ending, I still had to do a lot of things. So here we go. And now that I have the underwear in check with the shift and the stays, I guess it's time to move on to something more challenging, which is going to be the Regency gown itself. And if you want to see how that one goes, just subscribe to my channel and uh, you'll see. <laughs>